A subclass of mammals called marsupials includes kangaroos. The ability of marsupials to carry their immature young in an abdominal pouch makes them unique. After only a few weeks of gestation, the infants are delivered, where they develop further until they are robust enough to leave the pouch and enter the outer world. There are four species of kangaroos, the majority of which are native to Australia. The red kangaroo, antilopine kangaroo, eastern grey kangaroo, and western grey kangaroo are the four species in question. Papua New Guinea is home to the tree kangaroo, a different species of marsupial. The biggest kangaroos in the world are red. They typically reach heights of above 5 feet, or 1.5 meters. In exceptional cases, individuals can reach heights of 6.9 feet, 2.1 meters, and weights of 200 pounds, 90 kilograms. They can hop at a pace of up to 37 miles per hour on their powerful, muscular hind legs. All kangaroos are dedicated herbivores and can be seen munching grass while balancing on their large, muscular tails. They can use their short forelimbs for their distinctive boxing and wrestling behaviors. They also maintain their balance exclusively on their tails while kicking hard with their back legs. Males frequently engage in combat like this to access receptive ladies and establish their supremacy. People can be seriously hurt by kangaroos by being kicked or boxed. However, kangaroo attacks are uncommon unless they are provoked. Although kangaroos are mostly native to Australia, we wonder if they may live in Africa. We must take into account a number of elements in order to answer this issue. These include the environment, habitat, and food that kangaroos in Africa would have access to, as well as any potential rivals or predators. So let's start by taking a look at the weather. Australia's 3.3 million square mile landmass features a variety of climates. Australia is predominantly a hot desert in the middle, mostly savanna in the north, with maritime and subtropical climates in the east, Mediterranean climates in the south, and cold desert and semi-arid regions all over. There are many African nations that could provide a climate that is comparable to that of Australia. North African nations like Algeria, Libya, and Egypt have arid, hot desert environments, whereas more centrally located nations like Congo and the Democratic Republic of the Congo often have tropical rainforests and savanna. The southern parts of Africa have more temperate weather. Africa has a range of temperatures and levels of precipitation that are comparable to Australia because of its diverse climates. Lesotho has the coolest climate in Africa on average, whereas Ethiopia has the hottest. Rainfall fluctuates widely, resulting in everything from hot, dry deserts to lush, green rainforests and all in between. Let's think about habitat now. The various kangaroo species dwell in various settings, but they often stay in places where there is an abundance of plants for them to eat. The red kangaroo is primarily found in dry and semi-arid environments, including the rangelands of western New South Wales. The western grey kangaroo inhabits grasslands, savannas, woodlands, and shrublands. Eastern greys favor regions with more rainfall, a lot of trees and foliage for cover, as well as wide open plains for grazing. Additionally, antilopine kangaroos are common in open plains. Such diversity can be found in Africa. Africa's diverse landscapes range from the broad, open savannas and grasslands of South Africa, Botswana, Kenya, and Tanzania to the forests and wetter areas found in the Congo and Gabon, as well as the continent's eastern highlands. Many of these areas would be suitable for kangaroos to live. The diet of kangaroos is incorporated into their surroundings. Given that kangaroos love open plains and savannas, we can assume that there would be an abundance of them throughout much of Africa. As strict herbivores, kangaroos eat primarily on grasses. Additionally, the red kangaroo peruses a variety of shrubs and floral plants. They graze in the chill of dawn, dusk, or at night on Australia's vast grasslands. Kangaroos could undoubtedly survive if we merely consider the temperature, habitat, and food that are present throughout Africa. What about rivalry with other animals, though? 
What about predators, then? There are more than 40 million kangaroos in Australia. There might be fierce competition with other herbivores if they settled in Africa. These herbivores can be found in Africa in a wide range of various species, such as antelope, wildebeest, zebras, rhinos, elephants, and hippos. Kangaroos would occupy similar niches to Africa's native herbivores if they were to graze or browse the savannas and bush there. Could Africa handle the addition of one more grazer to its vast plains? Most likely, although it might put pressure on the creatures that are already present. As each thing, plant or animal, shuffles and readjusts to the changes that the introduction of kangaroos would create, this might have a ripple effect. Furthermore, there are no major land predators in Australia. Of course, there are also crocodiles and a variety of shark species in the water. In addition, 20 of the top 25 most dangerous snakes in the world are found in Australia. The dingo, though, is its biggest predator on land. This wild dog isn't actually an indigenous species, it was brought to Australia by Asian seamen over 4,000 years ago. They are, nonetheless, firmly embedded in the ecology. Dingoes hunt kangaroos, birds, reptiles, wallabies, and wombats. Because they can hunt in packs, they can even kill the enormous red kangaroos. However, Australia's fauna had to be on the lookout for a dearth of land predators prior to the introduction of dingoes. There once existed a deadly marsupial lion in southern Australia, but it became extinct about 30,000 years ago. There were carnivores that could weigh up to 290 pounds and had biting forces similar to modern-day lions. Especially the enormous kangaroos that previously inhabited the Australian outback, these predators would have preyed upon kangaroos. Australia broke apart from the prehistoric landmass known as Gondwana 65 million years ago, its wildlife was free to develop into a remarkable and frequently odd array of distinct species without being influenced by too many predators or invasive fauna. The duck-billed platypus, the echidna, the Tasmanian devil, the bandicoot, and, of course, the kangaroo are just a few of these unusual creatures. Australia's biodiversity is extremely susceptible to invasive species because of its seclusion throughout evolutionary history. The Australian government is quite picky about what comes into the nation as a result. This implies that some Australian species might not survive well in the vast African wilderness where there are numerous predators. They might not be as adept at evading capture as some of Africa's native prey. In the food chain, they would have to adjust to a new position. Kangaroos would probably be no match for Africa's top predators despite their great strength and ability to move at speeds of up to 37 miles per hour. Kangaroos may be food for lions, wild dogs, hyenas, cheetahs, and leopards. The same kinds of environments that kangaroos would inhabit are used by these predators to hunt the herbivores found on the African plains and in the bush. However, despite challenges from predation, kangaroo populations would probably stay steady. A female kangaroo can give birth to several young, each at a distinct stage of development. She might be nursing an older infant on the ground while also carrying a child in her womb, a second baby growing in her pouch, and being pregnant. This indicates that they have quick reproductive cycles and that females might have a large number of children during their lifetimes. Australians view kangaroos as vermin. In Australia, there are roughly twice as many kangaroos as residents. Farmers view these marsupials as competitors for their grazing livestock because they graze grassland. Kangaroos have soft feet in comparison to sheep and cattle, whose harsh hooves have a negative influence on the environment. They are less prone to tramp vegetation and harm the soil as a result. However, given their sheer numbers, Australia may have to implement culling. Some are raised for their meat, and if Australia's climate changes and drier circumstances become more prevalent, they may prove to be a more suitable agricultural animal than sheep and cattle, which are less well adapted. If kangaroos were introduced to Africa, what effect would it have on the continent's wilderness? Would they prevail over the other herbivores that live in Africa? 
or would they coexist with animals like kudu, impala, zebra, and blesbok? The African savannas may offer kangaroos a variety of habitats, but each ecosystem on this planet is composed on a delicate balance of creatures. Any change to this equilibrium could be disastrous. Finally, we think that kangaroos would live and prosper in Africa. They would thrive on the African plains thanks to their capacity to adapt to hot, arid environments and their herbivorous habit. But there is still the matter of whether or not Africa will survive the kangaroo's arrival. That's all for today. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. You can also leave a comment expressing your preferences for the upcoming videos and see you again soon.